Okay, uh, next I would like to welcome um, Chris Atchison, who, who founded and runs the International Association for Geosciences Diversity. And um, he came, he doesn't run an REU, but he came especially to tell you about and to be here. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Um, okay, so the IEGD, as I sit and I listen, and I'm going to learn a lot about diversity just being here, but um, understanding that uh, disability status really kind of transcends all of diversity. And so when I see statistics, uh, like the NSF statistics up here, that show us that they're tracking all the different minority groups, um, I really hope that we can get to the point where we're able to collect um, disability status. The problem there, obviously, is that a lot of it's self-reported data. There's laws that protect it. Um, but also understanding in any of our programs, I think the running statistic and, and realizing that statistics are mostly made up anyway, right? 65% of all statistics are made up. Um, <laughs> that of all of all individuals that have a disability of some kind, only 25% of them are actually self-disclosing that. And even fewer than that are actually uh, apparent disabilities, disabilities that are obvious. So we're dealing with a, a lot of students here. Um, like Reggie had talked about, uh, there's a lot of bias, there's a lot of stereotype, there's a lot of stigmatization. Uh, a lot of our students are trying to blend in. They're trying to be normal, quote unquote normal. Um, and so by not pushing for uh, full inclusion or at least attempting to include or attempting to accommodate or attempting to design a program um, that uh, is welcoming and supportive of diverse perspectives, diverse abilities, um, we're, we're actually marginalizing a lot of students uh, when we think we're doing something right. And when it comes to students from what we see as minority represented minority populations, uh, they face a, that double jeopardy. They face the fact that they're looking, that they're trying to overcome uh, their minority status as well as their, their disability status. So in 2008, uh, the IEGD was formed as an advisory group to promote uh, accessible opportunities for students who are often marginalized especially in very traditional sciences like the geosciences. Um, a lot of the services that we support now uh, focus on training faculty, getting faculty to understand uh, how to accommodate students, how to design their curricula to be inclusive, uh, not only in the classroom, in the lab, but also in the field primarily. Uh, training students and, and, and providing student support uh, to get them engaged, to, to, to learn how to self-advocate for themselves, how to advocate for others, um, to, to keep them engaged. But uh, what else we've seen along the way here is that uh, none of us are getting any younger. Right? I don't know if you woke up and looked at yourself in the mirror this morning and say, I am looking good. Uh, <laughs> but keeping not only are we trying to get students to be engaged in the science, keeping our aging population of geoscientists engaged. Uh, this coming Saturday, Aisha and I are running a, uh, an accessible uh, field trip uh, with the GSA annual meeting. We have a couple of faculty members that are joining us on that trip that were with me at the Vancouver meeting that when we talked to them afterwards, they were very emotional because they feel that the discipline has left them behind, that they're no longer able to be engaged into it because of their disability. So keeping, our, keeping the most knowledgeable of our community engaged in the sciences is something else that the IEGD is starting to, to present. So along with uh, that, you know, we're here for you. We're here to help you identify ways to keep students engaged, uh, to get students involved, help recruit, help promote, anything that I could do to help you with that. I know that there's going to be a few breakout sessions as well that we can talk about. So I would be remiss, remiss to say that we are a 501c3 nonprofit now officially. Um, I put 
brochures around on everybody's table. You can look at those. Um, you know, this, this, is, this is an organization that started out as a grassroots thing to help support people, to help support student, students and faculty. Now we're represented in almost every state in the U.S. and in over 25 different countries. So I don't know if we can really call ourselves grassroots anymore, but there's a lot of interest in this and there's a lot of interest outside of the U.S. So um, again, any questions you might have of me, please, uh, please seek me out. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And we, um, after the next presentation, we, we may have a few minutes for questions. Um, so uh, I'd like to move on, though, to our next presentation, which is Marianne Smith. Here you are. <laughs> 